Hello, you're here with me in my new carport picnic table location. You can't see it. It's much better in person. I can see it even right now, but with the haze, the cameras again. But there's the ocean right there, a little tiny, all along from like. See, it's hard to reference. Anyway, the ocean goes over to about there. All the way back. I love it. It's about two miles away. So I did a lot of moving this weekend. Oh, there's so much stuff in there. My girlfriend lived upstairs in the upstairs flat. I was renting a two-flat house. And uh, both flats. And uh, my girlfriend had been renting the top one for like six years. Anyway, I had tons of shit in it. Still does. I got everything I wanted, basically, almost. And I still, we still have a cleaning job to do down there. So, uh, I went into Stickham on Saturday, and that was annoying. Von Helton was there. And Von Helton and this other guy that's a regular in there that's into transhumanism, I forget, what's his name again? I don't know. But the both of them had Gary just talking about, you know, paranoid fantasy disasters, you know. Like the, uh, that the solar storm or something is going to take out the electrical system. There's only three of them. Three. How hard could it be to take out three? Uh, and it's just like, uh, it's this paranoid fantasy porn. Or something. And Von Helton especially thought it's being clever. It's like, oh, after a week, people think they're doing okay. And after two weeks, they'll think they have the hang of it. And after one month, yeah, they'll say they're settling into it. And then after that, they'll be like, I need my electricity back. And there's this funny kind of ironic thing where, um, you know, it's like it would be so hard people couldn't handle it. You know, people would handle it. See, when you have no choice but to handle something, it's pretty sure people handle, they might handle it poorly. <laughs> but um, when I was a kid, my dad lived off grid, and I'd spend you know three months of the year, summer with him, and every other weekend and stuff. But and as campers know, it's like yeah, you know, you want electricity. I don't want to give up the internet and everything. But you don't really go back. You go back a couple hundred years to technology that you can pretty much arrange yourself. Seriously. Um, but uh, on the other hand, it's funny because, you know, I live in a place where if the shit hits the fan, we'll have a, an, a, you know, our farmer's market would go on unabated. People just have to trade barter instead of use money or something. It's like in my neighborhood, I mean, I have papaya. That tree is actually blighted. The papayas aren't good, but I have two other papaya trees right over here. And an orange tree. In the back there's a lemon tree. And I don't have any fruit. This counts as not having any fruit. Just plants here that happen to be planted on your land. Fruit. But what are you guys going to do in places like New Jersey? So I was getting a little mad at, at, at bad mouth in the South a little bit, which I don't really have a bad attitude about the South, but I'll get into that. Another thing Von Helton brought up. I ended up leaving the room in annoyance, but whatever. But anyway, um, you know, but I was pointing out, you know, you know, what are you guys going to do in your New Jersey? This one dude in, who, who pissed me off by insulting me as soon as I went in there because some of the Gary drones just think that's funny. It's funny. It's not. Um... But they're like, oh, you're acting like it's an Arctic wasteland. Well, it might as well be. You guys, okay, if you go back a couple hundred years where I am, I mean, we still, people keep, we hunt, they hunt pigs, they keep cattle. But here's the thing. Humans are not that great in Arctic temperatures as, you, as animals. That's social knowledge that allowed us to live in all these cold places hundreds, for hundreds of years. But a cold weather economy like that, you know, that's different than a year-round agriculture economy. Okay, 
cold weather economy functions on, well, I'm just going to simplify, but in this situation, if you want to think what's really going on if you lose power, um, it's a wood and meat. Wood and meat. So, you guys have come a long way from a wood and meat culture. You, you don't, it would be hard. There's not enough meat to support the eastern seaboard, you know, even the rural areas. You'd be overrun. Um, I don't even think there's enough wood. I think people have, have to start burning up their houses, you know, like wall off a door, tear a room out and burn that for the summer. Cause that's the thing. It's like, what do you do in a situation if there was a crisis like that? It's like the, a lot of it. Humans can definitely survive in that environment, but a lot of it is how do you get there? How long does it take for you to fall back to burning wood and eating meat? And is there enough wood and meat where you live in the greater area? Right. So what are you guys going to do for meat? You're going to have to burn your own houses and eat each other, I guess, until you get herd of cattle you know and a lot of good crops you know they take seven ten years for the trees to start to fruit that's an investment um, but like in Hawaii we have plenty of there's plenty of fruits um, some of them desirable bananas and things that you know you just plant them and they they start fruiting in a few months but then I said hey well, how about you guys stop having the paranoid fantasies about these crises and look around the world because you know there's this this Coney 2012 thing is a good example there's crises in the world right now these things are happening there's people living without electricity and their food system was fucked up and only to find that Von Helton god I hate him seriously I, I've come to the point of starting it well hate's still too strong a word but I just I'm not gonna not say anything about it though it's, a, it's an opportunity but he's all, literally, what do I care what happens to a bunch of pygmies in mud huts? You know, and that's when I started again. what do I ha care what happens to some losers in Kentucky? Good luck. You know, and then he's conservative, it just bugs me. So what really bugged me is then, I left and came back and they started talking about something else, so I could, decided not to try to pull it back to what a filthy racist uh, Von Helton is. Could say there's a racist idea to say that. I mean, I'm like, well, my president's father was from Kenya. Maybe the next president's father's going to be from Uganda. Maybe I do care. Maybe it does affect me. So it doesn't affect me. Seriously, I, I can't think of anything that happened in Kentucky, uh, except for. I mean, nothing. I don't even drink their bourbon. I, I can't think of anything Kentucky did to affect my life very significantly. But I still care about Kentucky. But anyway, he started criticizing Gary for wanting a European-style government. I'm like, what's that, Vaughn? It's like socialist, socialist programs. And what am I supposed to do? It's like earlier, Vaughn had made a crack about, he's got broadband, he gets it for free, and everybody's like, oh, really, free? How do you, how'd you do that? You, oh, nothing, you can't. Some people are going, oh, are you stealing wireless from your neighbor? And he's like, well, I live in a country. There is nobody here for miles around. I'm like, well... Vaughn, don't you just live right next to your mom? And Gary's like, don't get personal. But see, I have to go personal, because then he's like, um, I don't believe in a, a European-style socialism. He lives off of that. His kids are fed off of that. His, his family receives public assistance. That's how they get their medical and their baby formula. And, and I brought that up, and he's like, you're just watching a bunch of haters. And it's like, no, dude, I watch your channel to find to know this stuff. I'm not taking anybody else's word for it. And also, of course, his haters' videos consist of long clips of him in his own words and blog TV. But separate from that, he's admitted, and I, frankly, I, I, I think that's great about him. He seems to have a good attitude. He's not embarrassed, he admits it. But then sometimes he must be because he says, I don't get public assistance. My kids and stuff do. Fine, you bring this stuff up and people get all self-conscious, like, oh, don't bring that up, it's so, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, I am a liberal, I support social programs. I support giving formula to kids if the only reason 
that they can't get sufficient formula is because their parents won't work, even if they could. But I mean, Von Helton might have a, a disability or whatever. I don't even care. It doesn't matter. I support it. But if you're taking assistance, I just don't, I just don't accept that you're going to tell me you don't support it. Bill Maher, I've been watching uh, Bill Maher. We got HBO free. I got Dish. I haven't had TV in like four years, so we got Dish. And, and so I was watching Bill Maher. He had a clip, too, from the south of a guy. And the guy's all like, I don't believe in the government. He's like, but you get food stamps, the interviewer said. He's like, yeah, but I deserve those. You know. Uh, if you take public assistance, then you could say, hey, the system should be changed. You should be the requirement. Like, for example, I had a friend that was on Section 8. That's the county housing. And it's, it's screwed up. You know, because, like, for example, it's a three-year waiting list. So if you want to move in with a boyfriend, then you, you have to go off the waiting list. And if it doesn't, if you don't last, you're three years again. But yeah, that really helps people. That, that leads to fraud because it doesn't help people get off it. If someone wants off it, they should be able to stay in the, the top of the waiting list. So you could say, hey, it should be different. I know, I've used it. Here's a way for it to be more efficient, or it should give me more benefits, or here's a benefit it gave me that was wasteful, or whatever. But to just say, I don't believe in that kind of program. And then Vaughn's just a joke. I mean, granted, I've seen some of his blog TV videos, and I've gone to blog TV, and those are the most embarrassing things, you know, him laughing about his wife hitting his mom and stuff. There's no reason to ignore that. He put that information out, and I'm supposed to just ignore it. Like, that's not important. What's important is the aliens coming and other crazy shit you talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, I've also been watching Fox News because I got this family thing. I'm, they're going gonna, gonna to have to upgrade because that's the only news they have is Fox News and Russia TV. Oh, and they have the headline news thing. Anyway, so I've been watching Fox News, and this is amazing. I mean, I know everybody knows how terrible Fox News is, but they have gotten really bad compared to like four years ago. Really bad. They don't even, you can't even watch the news on there and get news. Like, just given with their slant, they just don't even tell you. They just lie, and it's even in their news programs, just bitching and moaning. And like one quote was, um, you know, something about, I think they were talking about the New York police doing the covert operations in New Jersey and they're just like all liberals and some Muslims are against this sort of thing you know like the liberals are the more radical then there's the Muslims a little bit less radical you know just crazy stuff I mean just saying things like that is reporting facts it's gotten uh, Bill Maher I've been watching is he's annoying but uh, I think his cadence and stuff, he doesn't, it's not a very enjoyable comedian to me, but he has a great panel on there and great guests. And, and plus, Bill's really, he is kind of interesting. Like, he supports Israel, but that doesn't mean he's buying it, that it's the end of the world if Iran gets a nuclear bomb. He's like, well, actually, haven't we seen that when these Russia or these Pakistan, you know, if anything, you know, it adds a little sobriety to their attitudes. You know, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's reasonable to say that you can't rely on a thing like that, but it's in the mix, so. So he's got an interesting take in that sense. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, Fox News is really something else. So what else is going on? Um, I've been having some videos I want to make. It's kind of like when you get dehydrated. I know it's easy to get dehydrated in Hawaii. One of the symptoms I've noticed is you don't feel like drinking water. It's like your body goes into a preserve your water. It assumes there isn't water, since or else you wouldn't be drinking. So you kind of have to force that first water down. You want it and you need it. And it's a little bit like videos. I enjoy videos, but then if I get a respite, sometimes it's kind of like, I really want to make a video about that. I was going to make this video last night, and instead I just watched Inglorious Bastards. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to make a video. I'm probably going to make a video on um, Orc OR and just describing 
the idea. Maybe I'll make one also on a neurocomputational model. Um, and then uh, I'll probably just put those up with voice. Maybe it, maybe I'll go in my office and make them now. And I'll probably put them up with voice, uh, just, just purely me talking like normal. And then add graphics later. Redo it. Have a chance to redo it and edit it. Um, I have been researching RAID disks and the technology to purchase a, a video server. Um, it's an ironic thing with Gary, of course, I think we both agree, but you know, for example, Gary was in there with Von Helton of all people, pissing him off, and you know, he, he's like, don't get personal, you know, he won't, I kind of am hoping that there's a spectrum of, of approach to this between me and Gary, and if me and Gary can do it and catch everybody that's in the spectrum between, we don't really need people any more rude than Gary. Or any uh, more whatever I am on the other end, you know. Now, that may not work. There's certain people that have questioned and criticized this. And, like, to be serious, I mean, Gary has this total, I just think he's totally um, mishandled and and uh, treated badly, to be serious. And you point out, oh, she made this story up or that story up. Yeah, yeah, I know. But if she's like, oh, it's, it's a bad idea, you know, I get that. Um... But I think we have an attitude of, well, let's see if it can work because of the overlap of we both have this long-term hobby and we both believe in this and, and uh, you know, we're both interested. I mean, it's like Gary's still interested in if Von Helm wants to help create a conversation, he's open to that. He remains open-minded, whereas, like, I don't want to talk to Von Helm. I, I want him just to be kicked out, basically, right away. I don't really advocate that but what other way is there to put it I just don't see a valuable conversation if I am going to converse with him it is going to be critical and it is going to be calling him on his bullshit based on how he actually lives and you know real reality so there's me being less tolerant and Gary being more tolerant though usually I think it's probably the other way around but it's hard to say if you go into Gary's sticking room there's regulars there that piss Gary off and if they can take Gary's uh you know, anger, then they're basically welcome. So uh, maybe I'm the more intolerant one in the end. I don't block people, but I do just tune them out. So, so who knows? Maybe there's some ironic uh, balance there. But anyway, I've been looking it up, how to build these things, how to do it cheap and good. Mm. And I think I, I, I'm, I'm on target. I priced some machines, and it looks like... Uh, you know, three thousand dollar machine saving us a, a grand or two for a year of bandwidth. Try to basically have something that's ready, to, funded for a year, with a light funding requirement, say, to make it to the next year. And uh, sort of aiming on, well, let's keep, let's give it a try for a couple of years, basically, and, and see where we get from there. You know, assess. And so that's sort of the commitment, and I can. I can do that. I'm definitely going to be still doing this hobby, I think, knock on wood, uh, for the next two years. And frankly, sometimes when I have that uh, uh, video dehydration, you know, it's been, it's fun just to be working on the tools that are ideally going to help other people express themselves as well. So I think I put some of that energy into the server would be, would feel would feel good, productive. Um, like the most productive, well, I shouldn't say that. There's a couple things that feel productive to me. The main thing is that I feel my ideas are turning over in my head. But if I thought of productive in terms of, hey, I helped the whole, the wide picture there, not just myself with an idea that I'm enjoying, it's if I start a conversation. So if I make a tool that helps facilitate the conversation, then, then that's, uh, that's rewarding. So, okay, that ends my 7 a.m. ramble for the day. Um, take care.